My paper considers the question, what future for reinforced concrete shell construction in the UK in the 21st century? It is prompted by the current construction of the first notable UK shell since 1997. Briefly, it will suggest reasons for the decline of shells, what might be done to counter this, review three case studies and draw conclusions from them. In 1992, I published an article in the Cement and Concrete Association's journal Concrete Quarterly, Shell Comeback. Reinforced concrete shells had been widely used for medium and long span UK roof structures from the 1920s to 1970s, but subsequently they had been displaced by steel and tensile membrane structures. My article suggested that the construction of Isla's sports hall shells in Norwich in 1987 and swimming pool roof in 1991 would stimulate a resurgence of concrete shells in the UK. This did not happen. Why did the use of thin concrete shells decline? The decline since the 1970s is frequently blamed on perceived high cost when compared to alternative structural systems developed during the late 20th century. In an article for the International Journal of Space Structures in 2015, Gabriel Tang listed nine possible factors. The passing of the great masters, changes in fashion, cost of labour, building physics, impractical morphology of shells, complex analysis, material opacity, building codes and competing materials. Some of these factors were also highlighted in a survey of engineers and architects conducted in the USA in 2005, which posed questions like, why have thin concrete shells structures lost their popularity? Why have architects lost interest? This found that although some reinforced concrete shells were still being constructed in the USA, they were predominantly standardized and industrialized air inflated systems, such as binny shells. Architects commented that alternative structural systems can be more adaptable, it is easier to make geometric changes, they saw concrete shells as high cost, and generally shells were considered unfashionable and heavy. Mayer and Scheer found that architectural shell structures of quality had rarely been built in the USA since the 1970s. A review of projects featured in Concrete Quarterly between 1970 and 2005 revealed that this applied equally in the UK. Apart from the umbrella high pass shells of Huddersfield Market built in 1970, there were just two other examples featured. What can be done to counter this decline? Mayer and Scheer proposed two answers to counter the views of their survey participants. Make concrete shells cheaper to construct and make them appealing once more to architects and their clients. Earlier at a conference in Stuttgart in 1994, Heinz Isler had highlighted the advantages of shells. Dual function of the shell as primary structure and continuous cladding, minimal use of material as a long span thin surface, excellent load resistance and distribution properties, etc. Now we turn to the three significant architectural reinforced concrete shells constructed in the UK since the 1970s. First, the Norwich Sports Village, built between 1987 and 1991. Here, nine shells of 18.6 by 48 metres, rising to 10.5 metres at mid-span, were connected to form multi-sports halls. These could perhaps be classed as industrial shells as they had the advantage of repetition, reuse of the same force work and an experienced team with the same architect, engineer and contractor, known as the HIB system for House and Herd, Isla, Berziger respectively. This and factors such as the insulation utilised as the left in place casting surface reduce the cost sufficiently for the shells to be a viable option. The freeform aquapark 35 metres square shell approximately 9 metres high was also designed in collaboration with Copeland Associates. An important factor in the building of all these shells was their promotion by the architect Tony Copeland, who had extensive experience of designing similar sports facilities in Switzerland as chief architect for House and Herd. The American Air Museum in Duxford near Cambridge, 
was designed by Foster and Partners with Arup as engineers. The 90 meter span shell is a geometrically described shape, a slice taken from a torus with principal and minor radii of 278 meters and 64 meters respectively. These dimensions were influenced by the 16 meter high tail fin and 61 meter wingspan of the main exhibit, a B-52 bomber. The double layer shell is one meter deep and consists of 10 meter long by two meter wide precast inverted T units with 100 millimeter thick flange and 250 millimeter web. Each is curved in the transverse direction, but flat in the longitudinal direction. They support flat 100 millimeter thick precast slabs of 1.9 by three meters. Hence, both shell surfaces are slightly faceted. As the project was awarded the Sterling Prize RIBA Building of the Year Award in 1998, it is surprising that this did not subsequently stimulate more interest in shell construction in the UK. The first light pavilion at Jodrell Bank near Macclesfield is the first significant reinforced concrete shell to be constructed in the UK after a gap of nearly 25 years. The roof is a domed shell spanning up to 50 metres. Designed by architects Hassel Studio and engineered by Atelier One, the building's overall circular plan references both the shape and exact size of the 76.2 metre diameter dish of the Lovell telescope, seen in the background. Construction is by Keir Construction. Shell concreting took place in October 2020 with a team of 59 operatives over a period of 10 hours to pour the 381 cubic metres needed to form the dome. The outer surface will be covered with insulation and waterproofing and topped with soil to create a long span, thermally efficient, earth sheltered exhibition space with a concrete structure only 200 millimetres thick, similar to the floor slab. Why were shells used in these cases? For the Norwich Sports Village, the Isla shells had construction and energy efficiencies. There was an enthusiastic local architect familiar with the benefits of thin shells. For the American Air Museum, it was supported by the National Heritage Memorial Fund, Imperial War Museum and public appeals. Precasting of repetitive shell elements saved construction costs. Low distribution properties were exploited for suspension of aircraft. For the first light pavilion at Jodrell Bank, public funding again from the National Lottery Heritage Fund and UK Government Department of Car Culture, Media and Sport. The design relationship with the historic radio telescope dish was also very important. It also demonstrated the scope for thin concrete shells for earth sheltered energy efficient buildings. In conclusion, the low current uptake of reinforced concrete shells may be due more to architectural fashion and or constraints on future adaptation than any lack of efficiency. A further factor may be the absence of promoters. Demand has to come from architects and designers and that will only come with education. Currently, there is no specific architectural shell construction industry. Thank you very much for your kind attention.